a biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. A conversation about leaders in church and the expectations of integrity. Our special guest today says church life stagnates and flounders when ministers cross the integrity line. And he's talking about immorality, money mismanagement, and the abuse of power, or even inappropriate governance. Dr. Ivan Herald says lack of attention to integrity can potentially destroy church growth, sidelining ministers. His new book is called Guard Your Heart, Is Integrity Dead? He's the founder and executive director of Ausfame, an Australian family and marriage education. He's also the author of 13 books and numerous key church programs in areas of leadership, marriage, and family. And Dr. Ivan Harold, I want to welcome you to 2020 today. Thank you so much for having me on. Ivan, uh, I like the title of your book. It's quite catchy. Is Integrity Dead? What motivated you to put that little catch cry in your title? Well, basically, uh, the last 20 years, there's been a incredible um, number of senior ministers throughout the world that have fallen morally um, high profile. Uh, and I worked at an executive level within my own denomination, had to handle several situations uh, where there's been a lack of integrity. So basically speaking, although we talk about it, we don't really deal with it and openly and possibly in conferences and certainly not much is written about it. So it basically is something that I've been working on for a while and felt to get it out in a book form. And um, so Guard Your Heart is the end product. Yeah, very good. Now, so obviously you've come across it personally in your role in in leadership in your denomination. You've also done some study and made some observations that there's been a lot of moral failure. What are the consistent themes when there is moral failure? Have you been able to identify key indicators that perhaps appear before there actually is moral failure? Uh, Yes, there's a lot of things. Basically speaking, it tends to happen uh, at a sudden point. Things can be going along well for the individual, uh, male or female, because you can get moral lapse in uh, both men and women in leadership. And uh, yet then then there's this crisis point where there's a revelation of of an affair or whatever else. And uh, there's a glorious um, illustration of... um, a driver driving along and and he's at 110 kilometres an hour and then bang, there's a blowout. And uh, someone looking at this saying, you know, that's really scary. I hope that it never happens to me because it's looking at uh, a minister that has, uh, that has blown out in his ministry. Uh, but the point is, it's not a blowout. There's no such thing as a blowout. There's slow leaks. The stuff we're not dealing with over time, we live a facade and uh, and basically when it blows, it appears to be a huge blowout, but in actual fact, stuff has not been handled properly over time. Yeah, so when you say slow leaks, give me some examples. Well, one of the classics um, I found in working with ministers that have failed morally is that they have ceased their personal devotions. Now, Henry Hendricks is a quite famous in terms of church diagnostic work. He makes this exact same comment. He says that there are issues. He says that basically men and women remove themselves from personal accountability, especially when their church is growth huge. There's this feeling like, well, you know, there's nobody outside, and so who do I Um, become accountable to. The second thing was the fact that they had ceased their personal devotions. And then more than 80% of the cases showed that they become sexually involved after an inordinate amount of um, personal contact with a person of the opposite sex, particularly in the counselling environment. And so there are lots of little steps that are are not helpful uh, that will put a position 
uh, in, in a person's life where they've got to make choices. And unfortunately, they start making bad choices. And a huge issue is the cover-up in their own life. Yeah, well, as Galatians says, if we walk in the Spirit, we won't carry out the lusts of our flesh. And you've identified that if people stop their personal devotions, obviously they're not going to be walking in the Spirit as much, are they? And so it's harder for them to conquer their lusts and their fleshly or worldly desires. But um, I'm just thinking about our audience, Dr. Ivan, because most of them aren't pastors and they're not even involved in helping pastors on a management or a mentoring level, but they're all believers and they're all in churches. So I suppose if one of the key um, indicators or the things that happens first is that pastors stop praying and reading their Bible, maybe we all should as believers, as members of local churches, pray for our pastors and our leaders that they will keep seeking God and keep reading their Bibles and keep praying? Do you think that's a good thing that we can all do? Absolutely. It is so important that we uphold our ministry. And it the challenge is for pastors to have that living daily relationship with the Lord. Then we, as we're all sheep, um, even pastors are sheep, and that's Part of the problem that we've somehow in the last uh, 25 years or 30 years or more have started to, I'll use the term deify, but let's sort of tone that back a bit. But anyway, have elevated pastors onto some sort of platform situation, whereas we've got to realise we're all sheep. We're all prone to attacks and that type of thing. And the point you're making is absolutely vital that we should be praying for our pastors and upholding them in prayer. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something we can all do, isn't it? Because the reality is, and as you said, the bigger a church gets, the harder it is for a pastor to know everyone in the church. It's actually impossible. And so we may not have that personal contact with them, but we can certainly contact them through our prayers, can't we, and uphold them and just ask God. Because the reality is 99.9% of pastors start with a genuine call from God, don't they? They feel God call them or they sense God calling them and they respond to God. So they're very open to him, aren't they? So we should just be praying that that openness and that vulnerability and that you know sacrifice before God just continues right up until their final moments on the earth. Yes, and... Uh when our congregation are supporting pastors in prayer, they become conscious or should become conscious of the fact that they too can be attacked in the moral or integrity areas or money mismanagement. In, in other words, that they too in their prayer life and Bible study are brought closer to the Lord. You see, Paul in Corinthians makes an amazing statement. He says, I die daily. And you think, why on earth would the Apostle Paul, such a leader in the uh, Christian church, why would he make a statement like that? Because he realizes there's a vulnerability in life and uh, we're all attacked at different levels. If I could use the story, I was traveling in the States and I arrived in San Jose. The pastor dropped me at the hotel and said he'd be back shortly with his wife and they're going to take me out for dinner before my schedule of meetings. And um, I'm putting stuff away in the drawer, and here's a brown paper bag. I open it, and there's foul-looking pornography. I'm thinking, I don't believe it. I threw it onto the bed, continued packing. Then I thought, hang on, what if Mitch comes now and says, Ivan, what's in the brown paper bag? I'd never live it down. And particularly if he, he said to somebody, you know what, my guest speaker had pornography in his room. So I opened the door, found the garbage bin on the other side of the car park, across and put it in. Now, you might think, why didn't you put it in the garbage bin in the motel room? The reason being is I could have a, a wonderful young lady servicing my room who might be just close to coming to Christ, and yet she, she gets this material and thinks, There's a minister in this room, and he's reading this sort of stuff. So as soon as Mitch picked me up, I was chatting to him and his wife. I said, you'll never guess what happened to me. Now, a lot of you listeners would think, the last thing I'd do was tell anybody. But the point, this is the point. It's only what we keep in the dark that has power over us. Absolutely. My wife. My wife wasn't with me. She had uh, speaking commitments herself in Sydney. She joined me the next week in London uh, because I was speaking at a pastor's conference then. And as soon as Pauline and I got together in terms of 
Private Thomas said, honey, you'll never have uh, guess what happened to me in San Jose. Now, again, a lot of people listening might think, boy, I'd never tell my spouse. But again, if we don't deal with stuff on a daily basis and keep our hearts open, and, uh, et cetera, then we're going to be in as much trouble as we're talking about in terms that some pastors have gone through. Yeah, can I ask, did Mitch book that hotel for you or did you book it yourself? Oh, no. Um, I was at a stage where those sorts of uh, bookings are made by the host church. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd be I'd be asking them questions too. Who booked the hotel? Well, maybe, yeah. maybe next time book me yeah. one. That I don't have people like that in there. But um, Dr. Ivan, I just want to hold you there. I'm going to take a very short break. After the break, we're going to open up the talkback lines. Maybe you've got a comment about this, a question you want to ask Dr. Ivan about matters of integrity. Dr. Ivan Harrell is with us. He's written a book called Guard Your Heart, Is Integrity Dead? And you can call us today on 1-800-316-316. Back after this short break. The Vision app is the best place to find a growing range of Aussie-made on-demand videos to help you look to God daily. Be challenged by a series of apologetic interviews produced by Creation Ministries International and inspired by Helping Hands, which showcases people and organisations who make the world a better place. There are new videos being added every week in the free Vision Christian Media app. Just tap the Watch tab to see the growing selection. If you don't already have the app on your smartphone or tablet, download it now from vision.org.au slash app. Vision.org.au slash app. Vision. It takes a big family to keep vision on the air across Australia. Individuals, churches and businesses. Like civil support, project management and engineering services. Management, leadership, partnership. Helping you make sense of life, culture and current events from a biblical perspective. 2020 on Vision. Welcome back to 2020. We are talking about matters of integrity when it comes to Christian leaders and pastors, but the things we're talking about today are actually relevant to all of us, as uh, our guest Dr. Ivan Herald has been saying. You know, especially if we're married, we all have to live with integrity. We have to maintain our morals and our values if we want to have healthy positive relationships with those around us. And we're asking you, have you got a comment or a question you want to ask Dr. Ivan about this? We have had one call, Dr. Ivan, and it is Natalie from Camp Mountain, Queensland. Natalie, welcome to 2020. Thank you. And hello and welcome, Dr. Ivan. It's lovely to hear you. Um, Just a a comment, which I I don't know if you want to say anything about. Just yesterday, which is why it's so fresh in mind, at our church we do a thing called 345, which is at 345, And it's for very, you know, young families, people who probably wouldn't go to church. We get a lot of families come through from our mainly music group that are unchurched and join for this very, very, very family-friendly community service where kids are drawing and whatever. And we have older kids as well. And we were were going through the uh, Beatitudes and we were talking about pure of heart. And I was actually leading part of the kids section. And it was very deep matter trying to convey this to kids and we talked about what starts in your mind becomes what happens in your actions with these kids and trying to convey to kids that it's really important to to guard your mind and to, to, to you know cut the bad thoughts out before they grow yeah. So are you saying or asking Dr. Ivan is it the same for adults as well that we have to be very careful that we guard our mind is that the point? Yeah, and how do you get that through to kids? Because I, I just found that I thought a long and hard about how we conveyed this message in 20 minutes in a fun kind of way with kids, you know. Dr. Yeah. Ivan, have you got any thoughts on that? Oh, look, you're absolutely right. Uh, the issue is the mind gets switched on. Now, that's a very private thing. And if we keep it totally private, that jolly thing can become a monster in our thinking. And then the mind... Uh, Mind becomes an action, and, and on we go and start losing that integrity. So it's so important that we actually do with issues. What, from my perspective, we're, our young people, our wonderful teenagers, are facing a situation that we never faced as kids, etc., in terms of the attack morally, stuff that's available. You can have gorgeous kids. They wouldn't think about putting a foot wrong. They open up their... Um, their uh, phone and stuff is coming across that you think, man alive, uh, 20 years ago this would have been gross 
pornography. And so there yes. is an attack, and it's very, very difficult. But we as, as um, families have to have resolved. I'm only talking personally from my perspective, and uh, for Pauline and I, we don't allow on our television anything which starts using filthy language or uh, is showing sex scenes. If, um, in other words, what I'm saying is we, we put up in our own hearts and our own home uh, a standard and so it's important that we raise those standards. Now, we can raise them by talking to our friends, what we should do, by reading the Word of God, by talking with our pastor, but we've got to raise standards because, unfortunately, standards are being eroded away. And uh, you've got to feel for our young people because they're living in a very gross world. Yeah, well well said, Dr. Agree. Ivan. Yeah, I completely agree. It's so tough. But they think, you know, I gave an example of a computer game where you promise your friend you're going to back them as you go through the tunnel and halfway through you go, now I'll just kill them now in this game. And some of the bigger boys thought that was really cool. And I went, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> Tragically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, thank you. I just thought I'd bring that up because it's so relevant to what we are up to. Thank you. Well, Natalie, we really appreciate you calling in. And, uh, you know, you're welcome to call us any time. And there's other spaces on the uh, on the call line uh, right now on 1-800-316-316. Give us a call on 1-800-316-316. Natalie, thanks again for joining us on 2020 Today. So, Dr. Ivan, we've only got about a minute until news, but um, she raises an interesting point, doesn't she, Natalie? And that is we've got to be really careful about what we think about, whether we're children or adults. Yep. It's the same for all of us, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Uh, the mind, I mean, Paul deals a lot with the issues of the mind. Whether you look at Philippians, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ. So even Jesus was attacked in the area of the mind, if you remember the temptation. So we've got to recognise it's an issue that scripturally is, it's talked about and we've all got to deal with it. Let's not hang our head in shame. Let's tell the devil where to go and uh, let's deal with it. Yeah, and it goes back to your first point, doesn't it? Reading your Bible and praying every day. It's so good for your mind. It's so good for your spirit. It's so good for the choices and the behavioral uh, decisions that we make. But I am so uh, glad we have Dr. Ivan Herald with us today. He's just written a book all about integrity, and it's called Guard Your Heart Is Integrity Dead. Dr. Ivan, we do have another caller who's called just before the news, and she's been very patient. So I want to go to her now. Kay, are you there? Yes, I am. And first, I'd like to say thank you for Vision Radio. It's an absolute breath blessing. I listen to it as I go to work at a nursing home, and it blesses me and oh, helps me. Well, that's good to know. You're in Gilgand- Gilgandra, New South Wales. I am. I am, yes. What's the and population of Gilgandra these days? 3,000 people. Oh, that's a solid little town, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. So and what's your point you'd like to make today? Or have you got a question for, for Dr. Ivan? I'd just like to say hello to Dr. Ivan and his wife, Pauline. We've known them for many years, and God bless you both, and keep up that wonderful ministry. I've been to some seminars, and they were very helpful, and my husband and I are going very well, and we're still ministering, so we praise the Lord. And just keep it up. How very nice. What was that? I said, how very nice. It's lovely to chat with you, Kay. Bless you. You know, do you remember me? I was your maiden name, Boyle. That's me, yes. <laughs> yes, there you go. How about that, Andrew? I, in all the people of Australia, I can pick from the tone of her voice what her surname is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the fact she's from Gilgandra also narrows it down a little bit, Dr. Ivan. But So, Kay, you said you're involved in ministry in Gilgandra. What ministry are you involved in? Well, we at the moment, uh, we go to um, Heartland Church. But we, we feel to minister to the people in the car club and the unchurch as well. We have a ministry to Vietnam vets and veterans and, yeah. And I, I minister in at the nursing home as well and I get paid for it, so that's good. <laughs> I'm a diversional therapist. That's excellent. Sounds like you're very, very busy for the Lord there in Gilgandra. What a blessing you and your husband must be. Thank you, Jesus. 
And we, you know, I get a chance. I say, Lord, who would you like me to talk to today? And he guides me and I lead a couple of people to Jesus most weeks. So thank you, Jesus. And Ivan, he's, he's been a blessing all his life and so his wife, Pauline. And they're doing amazing ministry. We, re- we really need the ministry into those church pastors, like you're saying. Thank you. Thank you. Ivan, have, have you got a response for uh, for Kay today, Ivan? Oh, just just very much appreciate your kind words, and uh, may the Lord continue to bless you and your dear husband. Thank you, Ivan, and same with you. And yeah. we all love Vision Radio, don't we? Well, thank you, Kay. Yeah. That's uh, that's great feedback as well. I just pray God uses you today in that nursing home as you're driving there. I can't imagine the traffic's too bad in Gilgandra, so you'll probably get there pretty soon. <laughs> no, and I and I felt that the Lord prompted me. I've been doing this for twenty years, going into Dubbo, and He's prompted me to just pull over and let the trucks go past. And I and I need to make add thirty seconds to my trip because there's a lot of trucks on this highway, and so I just pull over, let them go, and and listen to Vision Radio and praise the Lord all the way in, and pray. That's it. So you're on the Newell Highway, are you? I am, yes. Yep, yeah, yeah. no, pretty well. Well, Kay, I just want to thank you so much for calling in today and good to get uh, just your little story there. I mean, what a blessing you and your husband are to Gilgandra, ministering in the nursing home, ministering to the car club and to unbelievers and uh, awesome. You keep up the good work. I'll tell our Ivan and Pauline something personal real quick. Last year I felt I should sing in the Estedford in Dubbo the holy city, and accompany myself. And I did. I really felt God said, and I practiced for months. I got first place, and this year I felt I should sing again. His eye is on the sparrow and got first place. And I, I wanted, not, not about winning anything, I just wanted people to hear about Jesus in the Estedford. So that's exciting. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Kay, I want to thank you so much. I want to get back onto topic day because Dr. Ivan's written this book, but uh, really yeah. appreciate you calling in. God bless. Have a super day. God bless you all. Bye-bye. There Bye. you go, Dr. Ivan. We've got fans everywhere, haven't we? Vision's got fans, and you've got fans out <laughs> in Gilgandra. But uh, I, I want us to um, zero in on the subject matter of your book again. So, you know, the failure uh, of leaders' integrity, it really has a big impact on a lot of people, doesn't it? It really does, um Particularly when it happens at a at a, a large church, a mega church, the the losses in the church is are stunning, uh, utterly stunning, uh, and that is so tragic. Now, I'm sure both of us would agree if folk leave the church but then go to another beautiful church and become involved. Well, we're happy. Well, what saddens us is when people leave their Christian walk, and they fail in their, in their ongoing faith. And because they've been so hurt with what has happened, and they couldn't believe that their pastor would do X, Y, and Z. And so, and so that's what the tragedy is, when people are lost to the kingdom. And um, I can't apologize for my next statement, but when we get to eternity... Someone's got to have to answer for souls that are lost. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess, again, I'm trying to think of our audience who aren't pastors and leaders. How do we prepare ourselves? Not that we're expecting people to fall, but how do you think believers should prepare themselves for the fact that people are human and they and they can make mistakes and sadly they can fall in such a way that it doesn't derail our faith? One of the important things is, I hinted to it uh, earlier before the news, is we've got to realise that pastors are just as much sheep as anybody else in the congregation. Now, let's look at a situation. In a church context, uh, a, a, a guy might commit adultery, and yet the pastor, the pastoral team, uh, different friends in the church will work overtime with that guy. If he's um, re- genuinely repentant, and, and, and uh, uh, trying to put his marriage back together. We'll work overtime with that. 
Well, the question is, why don't we do exactly the same with, um, with ministers when it happens? So often in the Christian church, we've been guilty of, of shooting our wounded. And uh, we've got to realise that there's a responsibility to get alongside these people and see them restored again. Now, I'm not going to get into the issue of whether they're restored to ministry because folk listening to your program represent so many different denominations. They'll all have their own protocols about whether they can or can't get back into ministry. But we do want them to see them restored to their marriage, their family, their church, their Christian life, their own faith with God. So we've got to recognize that our pastors are just as human as everyone that is listening to your program. And they're just as um, likely to become under attack and give in to it if they are not guarding their heart. Yeah, absolutely. And again, if you look at the scriptures, there's a lot of uh, classic stories in there, isn't there, of moral failure. And I'm not talking yep. about the, the bad people in the Bible. I'm talking about some of the heroes of the Bible also failed morally. G- give us some uh, of the stories in the Bible that, that really ring true with you in this area of integrity. Oh, well, you, I mean, probably the classic is King David. Uh, but, but apart from that, you've got... Um, uh, you've, you've got Samson um, having relationships with prostitutes. You think, what on earth is going on with these people, so-called men of God? Uh, but the David situation is an absolute classic. And a lot of people feel, oh, well, he got away with it. In my actual research of the scriptures, nothing happened much in David's life for three, could have even been four years after this adultery situation with Bathsheba. And so there is a price, but the huge price in David's life is what happened in his family as a result. Some feel it could have been in less than 12 months that his uh, son then rates his half-sister. So because it appeared that immorality was um, not open and not dealt with openly, uh, that the son felt the father got his father, King David, got away with, but he didn't. And then that has a repercussion because Absalom then assassinates him and and then you end up with the civil war um, some time later. So uh, even the King David situation, there are dramatic problems as a result of immorality. And if we're to learn anything, I mean, there are eight, in my book, I deal with the eight stages that David goes through in the immorality situation. But we've got to realize if immorality or um, other issues get into our life, it will have a repercussion in our family if we do not um, fully re- and properly repent of it. Yeah, absolutely. And you touched on something before about pastors and leaders who sometimes go down the path of doing a lot of counseling of members of the opposite sex and too much time spent with members of the opposite sex and it can easily happen in a work environment when people are busy and they might have an assistant or a secretary or fellow staff member of the opposite sex and a lot of deception can creep in can't it in those so-called platonic work-based relationships that that's when the deception can come in but I think that's relevant for everyone isn't it anyone who's married what are your thoughts on a married person, Dr. Ivan, who is a Christian, having a close friendship with someone of the opposite sex who's not their spouse? Do you think there's any wisdom in that, or is that something to be avoided? I think primarily it's to be avoided. and uh, We're talking about uh, a professional friendship, then that's a different matter. But if we're talking about the fact that it's moved from professional to personal um, friendship in that way and that the reason for getting together is no longer professional, doing a task, whatever it is, church life or or whatever else. Um, it, once it moves into the personal, we start spending time. The moment we start or an individual starts not being honest up front, uh, say, say to their spouse, oh, I'm just going down the road, uh, want to pick up a few things, but then meet with that person, there is a problem straight away. And you've got to recognize that uh, uh, we're all capable of that, but it's important to keep uh, the issues very open with our spouse. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because usually physical relationships follow emotional relationships, don't they? There's a there's a bond formed, and it's difficult to form that bond when there's more than two people in a room, isn't it? If there's three or four working together, it's difficult to fo- to to really form an unhealthy emotional connection with a member of the opposite sex, isn't it? Uh, yes. Um, it, it, it is important to have good relationships. We're not uh, saying we're going to be isolates because, you know, isolation, that's a problem. But we need a relationship, obviously, with our spouse. Um, my wife did a session because I was involved in training ministers in our national college for six years. And uh, my wife did a session for the uh, pastor's wives on protecting their husbands, how to protect your husbands. And she used an illustration. When I listened to the session later, I said, who was that person? She said, you don't need to know. I said, I do want to know, because it was something that happened in a pastoral situation we were in. And then I, eventually she told me, and I said, why didn't you tell me at the time? She said, you didn't need to be redirected in your focus. She knew I didn't see it. She just made sure she was there with me all the time. So there is a protective mechanism we can involve ourselves with. And, and, and of course, the smarts, which I've already said, that keep our uh, spouse fully informed when um, attacks occur that we have no control over. They just happen, and uh, the enemy is trying to set us up. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you make a good point there, too, that we actually can proactively protect our spouses can't we and try and be their their guardians a, a friend of mine a pastor friend had a very large church and one saturday he went down to the church to do some work and a female member of the congregation came to the car park and said oh i'm sorry i've she was stuck for some reason she had to get somewhere and she had no vehicle or something and he just without even thinking said i'll jump in i'll give you a quick lift down the road and as they went down the road she started sharing very personal and intimate details about herself which was inappropriate and he couldn't get her out of the car quick enough and he got her out and he told his and he did what you said he told his wife about it straight away and uh, his wife was a good proactive uh, you know guardian of him so the next day in church I think she effectively went up to the woman and told her in no uncertain terms what she would do to her if she ever spoke to her husband in such a I think it involved scratching her eyes out and uh, the woman definitely got the message yeah yeah no she's good she's good and she's been on this show actually and uh, the lady made no more attempts to share intimate details about herself with her husband after that so yeah we we do i think it's important for spouses to realize isn't it? it's not that their husband or their wife wants to fall but sometimes they need help as well because they may be getting sucked into something they can't even see from the outside yeah. well paul has always known that i am incredibly focused incredibly focused on what i'm doing and, and ministry and, and and that type of thing having said that we are always our time together We've always had um, one day which is just for us. Even now, we've been married uh, 58 years. We still have that day every week where we are, it's just us. And uh, we had this joke uh, situation between us. So, uh, the first one to talk about church, church matters as to buy the coffees or whatever else. But the reality is we've got to be proactive in keeping our relationship alive. Yeah, and that applies to all believers, doesn't it, who are married, that whether you're in leadership or not, that relationship in the busy, complex world that we all live in, we all have to work hard at developing positive relationships, don't we? Absolutely. Dr. Ivan, I want to ask, have you got any more final thoughts about this? What's really burning in your heart before we finish up today on this topic? What would you like to say to our audience today? I think you raised a point which is extremely important, that we as congregational members, and I put myself there, I'm part of a congregation when I'm not away ministering. We have a responsibility to pray for our pastor, to be actually telling our pastor, hey, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you and your dear wife and family. Uh, And so it's important to keep that alive and to guard our heart. There's lots of issues, even though I'm dealing with the tragedy of the lack of integrity within a guard your heart. What is important to uh, note in concluding is a lot of the book is dealing with how we can guard our heart. And so rather than it being a negative book, it's a positive book looking at the the life skills necessary to build a, uh, a consciousness 
of the preciousness of our Christian faith and how it operates in our marriage, in our ethics towards money, in our ethics towards power, and all of these issues. Don't forget that the the concept of guard your heart comes out of Proverbs 4, 28. Guard your heart, for out of it are the issues of life. So we want the issues of life to be life, not, not destruction. And so um, folk can get a copy of Guard Your Heart. They can correspond with us, our office directly, um, ozfame, O-Z-F-A-M-E, ozfame at bigpond.com, or they can go direct to amazon.com.au. And they can get a copy of it that way. Uh, probably if, they, if they've got Prime, they can get a, a mail free. Might be a cheaper way for them. But uh, yeah, we'd love to hear from folk who would like to get a copy of the book. It's been an absolute delight chatting with you, Andrew. Well, you know what, Ivan? We've got one more call who's just called, and we're going to sneak him in right now. His name oh, is sorry. David. Are you there, David? Oh, yeah. Good morning, Andrew. And well, uh, good morning to you. Have you got a comment or a question yes, today for Dr. Ivan? Um, I'm just calling in to, um, I just wanted to share something that, uh, an encounter I had uh, about a week ago. Um, so, so thankfully on that particular day, I had, um, had my spiritual refreshing time and, and I had this prompting um, to, to drive to a certain town. Now, I, anyway, I, I went there and um, I, when I was there, I encountered this, a woman there um, who uh, was appeared to be dressed in a, you know um, seductively and and i faced i faced this test and um anyway i i had had an encounter to talk to her had had the opportunity to talk to her and by the grace of god i um was just able to um uh, speak to her um about uh to, to let her know about um uh um, checking out um, uh, the, the Ray Comfort's ministry, and um, anyway, I realised, and and um, she responded quite well. And um, anyway, I I rang well, very soon after. I rang my friend and asked him, you know, told him about the situation, and um, asked him, and we both prayed. And I just I sensed an anointing on that prayer, and um, I just sensed that that um, God has a real call on her life. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to share that, that, that God, even though I faced temptation, that God brought victory through that. Okay, that's really interesting. Dr. Ivan, you got some thoughts for David on that? Yes. Um, um, because people represent a challenge to our integrity, doesn't mean we should cut them off at the pass, so to speak. Uh, obviously... Uh, uh, chatting to them needs to be in an open situation so that people can see that uh, it's uh, not something that's uh, closed off. Uh, but um, the fact that you followed through with the compassion to present the claims of Jesus in our life, uh, that's a great thing. God bless you for doing that, David. And uh, yeah. pray that uh, uh, God will open up the doorway to her heart and... Uh, and if she gets in contact with uh, Brother Comfort, as you mentioned, that would be a great thing. But uh, bless you for following the promptings of the Lord. Bless you. Thank you. Good on you, Dave. Thanks for calling in too, mate. Well, Dr. Ivan Herald, I want to thank you again. And just to remind our listeners, if they want to get a copy of your book, which is called Guard Your Heart, Is Integrity Dead? They can go to ozfame at bigpond.com. That's ozfame at bigpond.com. Dr. Ivan Harold, what a joy it's been to speak with you. What a great testimony you've got. What a great example you've set. 58 years of marriage, still walking strong with the Lord. I want to thank you for joining 2020 today. My pleasure. God bless all of your listeners. Uh, may the Lord bless us and keep us in the power of his w- w- uh, way. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.